Now, the situation in Israel we covered at length last night, so I'm not going to redo all that reporting. But the weakness of Joe Biden when it comes to the war in Israel is almost as severe as the weakness of Joe Biden when it comes to Ukraine. Back in January and February, when there were reports all over the place from aid organizations about famine in Gaza, how much the population was on the brink of famine and then dying of malnutrition, the Americans were insisting on allowing aid trucks or even U.S. military trucks to enter Gaza through the Egyptian crossing, and the Israelis made clear they wouldn't allow that. Even though we're paying for their war, even though we give them all the weapons they need to fight it, even though they couldn't fight the war without us, the ones who dictate this relationship is Israel, and it's always been like that. So instead of demanding that the U.S. be permitted to enter Gaza in order to avoid having the world see the United States responsible for a starving population that's dying of famine, the United States, Biden said, okay, sorry to ask. We understand. You won't let us. Can we build a pier that will allow us to deliver aid? Now, a lot of people were very suspicious of that motive and said the motive was not to give humanitarian aid to Gaza, it was to help the Americans in Israel govern Gaza and control it once this war is over. But whatever the motive, the U.S. claimed it was to help Palestinians deliver aid, the pier was announced and then it was built and it was just completed about a week ago. Unfortunately, it began to rain in that region and as soon as it began rage, uh, raining, this pier that the United States military just got done building at Joe Biden's demand, uh, order completely disintegrated. It fell apart. It broke into small pieces. And now it's floating away at sea. I can't think of a more symbolically uh, vibrant image of Joe Biden and his leadership in this. Here from the New York Times today, U.S. pier for Gaza aid is damaged by rough seas. Quote, Army engineers are working to put the pier back together and Defense Department officials hope it will be operational again in about a week. Quote, the temporary pier that the U.S. military constructed and put in place to provide much-needed humanitarian aid for Gaza has broken apart in rough seas, the Pentagon said on Tuesday. The latest calam calam calamity to befall the pier endeavor, into pier endeavor punctuated a particularly grim several days in Gaza, where Israeli forces have ramped up attacks on the city of Rafa, just two days after carrying out a deadly strike that killed dozens of people. Quote, unfortunately, we had a perfect storm of high sea states. And then, as I mentioned, this North African weather system also came in at the same time, creating a not an optimal environment to operate. Sabrina Singh, the Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary, said at a news conference. In early March, President Biden surprised the Pentagon by announcing that the U.S. military would build a pier for Gaza. Defense officials immediately predicted that there would be logistical and security issues. And it turned out that this pier is pathetic. We can't even build a pier in shallow waters to connect to land that allows boats to come and deliver things onto land. Some of the most basic military operations when we fund the Pentagon with a trillion dollars a year that they can't account for. Here's a picture of the broken pier, the pier that's not even connected any longer to land, parts of which are now floating out at sea. And Charles Lester, who is a foreign policy analyst, said, quote, new, the U.S. has stopped all humanitarian aid efforts using the DOD-constructed maritime pier, which is now heavily damaged and floating adrift after bad weather. Who would have thought? Maybe it would have been better to simply deliver aid via Gaza's seven different land crossings. But, of course, Israel didn't allow that, and that's why we built this pier that is now disintegrating. It's breaking up into tiny little pieces. And the excuse is, oh, well, it rained very hard. It was a perfect storm, a bad weather, as though you build a pier, what, just for days that it's sunny and you hope it doesn't rain? Because if it does, your pier is going to just break up into tiny little pieces and float out to sea, and then you can't use it anymore, the pier that you so flamboyantly announced you were going to build to help the people of Gaza? The White House is really at a point where it's pathetic. You see that with Ukraine, you really see it with Israel. That red line that Joe Biden pronounced he was imposing several months ago on Israel's invading Rafa was obviously ignored and violated by the Israelis. The Israelis laughed at that red line. They said, we're not going to pay attention to that red line. Of course, we're going to invade Rafa the way we want. And for the last two weeks, their excuse has been, well, Israel's not involved in a really heavy invasion or attack of Rafa, and so the red line's not violated. 
And now the world has watched hundreds of Palestinians being incinerated by a fire that Israel caused with a bombing right in the sector where they had promised was a safe zone. And now obviously journalists at the White House, even pro-Biden journalists, are asking, how can you possibly claim that Joe Biden's red line wasn't violated? And here's the national security spokesman, John Kirby, trying his best to justify how somehow the Israelis didn't do what Joe Biden publicly said they can't do. So how does this not violate the red line that the president laid out? As I said, we don't want to see a major ground operation. We haven't seen that at this point. How many more charred corpses does he have to see before the president considers a change in policy? We don't want to see a single more innocent life taken. And I kind of take a little offense at the question. No civilian casualties is the right number of civilian casualties. And this is not something that we've turned a blind eye to, nor has it been something we've ignored or neglected to raise with our Israeli counterparts. I mean, honestly, the, the, these, these spokespeople have to stand up every day, like Matthew Miller in the State Department, John Kirby here and in the Pentagon, and Karine Jean-Pierre, who have to defend American policy in Ukraine, and especially its enabling of this war in Israel. And they have to say that the red line wasn't crossed because Israel really didn't do much in Rafah. And then the reporters say, well, they just incinerated hundreds of people, many dozens of whom died, including women and children. How many do they have to kill before you say, yeah, now they're really attacking Rafa? And then John Kirby says, how dare you? I'm offended by that. We don't take for granted civilian casualties. What has, the, what has the United States done to rein in the Israelis in any way, to stop the Israelis in any way, to impose any real limits on what they're doing in carrying out a war where more bombs were dropped on this tiny, densely populated strip of land in the first two weeks than the United States often dropped in all of Afghanistan during the 20 years that we fought that war for the entire year? Use bombs in the first several months, 2,000-pound bombs that the United States stopped using all the way back in urban areas in Iraq because of how many civilian uh, casualties occurred. It's a war that is indiscriminate, that obviously doesn't value Palestinian life, and the United States is very much a part of it. And these people have to get up every day and not only justify it, but try and reconcile Joe Biden's red line with the Israelis' contempt for it and their violation for it because he knows that Joe Biden can't and won't do anything to stand up to the Israelis. He can't do it politically, and he doesn't want to do it because he's a lifelong supporter of Israel. And so this is the kind of self-humiliation in which they have to engage every day. Whatever you think about the war in Ukraine at the beginning and wanting to fight Russia, whatever you thought about the war in Israel at the beginning and wanting to fight Hamas, you cannot deny that Joe Biden's policies in presiding over these two wars have been nothing short of disasters in a way that has really not only humiliated him, but made a major blow to the idea of American power in the world and American credibility in the world because he just looks so weak. He can't complete a sentence. And then he obviously can't enforce anything that he's saying, and he leaves it to these underlings to do so, and they just feed all kinds of obviously false and contrived rationale to justify all of this is happening. And, of course, the press is completely confused why the American people don't want to reelect Joe Biden. They're just, they're genuinely confused by that. They don't see any of this. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.